there's going to be a bit of a time jump. This this uh, adventure starts with the assumption that y'all are back at the keep. It is something mm-hmm. of a home base. Y'all were not miles away. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's only a one day march from the from the nearest settlement. In fact, I can I'll, I'll pull up my crappy map. Your last adventure was just to to guard that uh, merchant Nathan, the most competent uh, merchant of all time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I expect it. And now you are back to the borderlands at the keep, I would assume. Uh, Mary Hoof, you return, and uh, you awaken to the hustle and bustle of a new day in the keep. Thanks to your deeds yesterday, the threat of orcish bandits has been quelled, at least for the time being. Shipments of food and, and various goods um, have, have resumed, uh, more or less unabated. Uh, and as part of the boon of that, you hear actually the soft clucking of hens outside, and the thing that's waking you up, the crowing of a rooster. Very early in the morning, Cox Crow is in fact first glimmer of dawn. As you arise for the morning, there's, uh, you're kind of on your own for the time being, actually. Warren has uh, taken off with Nate for about two weeks. Friedrich is apparently doing some work with those mercenaries. Y'all, well, they're mercenaries now that y'all just fought. And so for the moment, it's just you in the key. Well, I got a... Uh... Gotta socialize with the people. It's complicated. Because, right. yeah. well, to her, they are weird, but she is weird. <laughs> um, well, you go to socialize. Um, I guess if, if you're going to do that, the first place you probably head towards is breakfast, which, thanks to completing that yeah. last quest, would be free. We have money for it. Yeah, you sort of head down to, uh, I guess, the mess hall. And yet, not only do you have money for it, you straight up don't need to pay for it because one of the the deals you got from completing a mission for Diane was free room and board here. That's true. Amazing. I mean, that's true. Yeah, you can can flip someone some coins if you want, and maybe that'll make them a little more uh, appreciative, uh, but you don't have to. Well, I figure we're still in the the first week, and I remember having... uh, had to deal with the cook so that he he cooks stuff. <laughs> uh, so mm-hmm. so I figure we we are fairly 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 good uh, regarding the breakfast, even if it's not bacon every day. <laughs> uh, that's well, that's a good question. Breakfast this morning, as you sort of head to the mess hall, it seems to consist of there are eggs, courtesy of those chickens you've heard outside. Mm. The sausage, it's a bit of a classic, especially in frontier lands of just, we killed something. <laughs> it's edible. <laughs> um, uh, and there is a, sort of, the, sort of the, the heart, the staple of the meal is uh, oatmeal with little pieces of, of dried fruit, specifically apricot. To like sweeten it a little bit. Hey, to be honest, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's uh, it's on the meme right here. Uh, it's really good. So she, she's gonna enjoy herself that. You know, it's it's not food like she had in the in the fire court, but uh, still cool. We eat in boys. <laughs> and, you know, she talks with the others, and the others are probably saying something like, "We're bored because we're guards." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. As you sort of look around, you can actually see there's a game. It's some kind of card game happening in like uh, on one end of the table. Um, it, it appears to be a game that involves like a lot of like comparable, I would say, in our world to like poker or um, uh, I think the, the the schoolyard term I think is BS or uh, bluff. Um, but literally, just the game where it, it's basically a game of bluffing and social liar. Bullshit. Maybe <laughs> yeah. There's lots of names for it. Yeah. I may be good at this game, I think. Because uh, yeah. I'm I'm a bit dumb. And that's good for, for bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you want, they will deal you in. And you can play like a quick little uh, couple of hands with them. Hey, yeah, I don't know. We put uh, two silvers or something like that, I figure. And we play. Uh, so this is, as I said, it's it's a very like bluffing heavy game. So it's a charisma mm. check, but for proficiency, it actually uses a gaming set. If you have any any proficiency in gaming sets, wow! Uh, I don't know. First time ever that gaming sets have come up in any D anD D game <laughs> that I've I mean, been in. <laughs> there's there's never going to be a better time. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can cheat and, and roll sleight of hand uh, if you want to, uh, but I don't know if that would be worth it over two silver. Oh, no, I'm good. Uh, so I do not have proficiency. Uh, just a random player. Um, I could maybe use insight, however, 
because it's like a, a deception game. That's but, interesting, uh, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'll let you choose between whichever you prefer. Insight I mean, or just a flat charisma check? Well, they are the same. Actually. It's just that one, I have criticals on uh, one and two, and the other I do not, I think, because I have right. insight. And, but, uh, that's right. All right. Uh, then then give, me, give me an insight check. 20. Let's go. Oh, I lose. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't lose. I'm uh, four over the, the check. And, uh, yeah. But the guy so is not good. It was, no. it was a failure? No, it's a, four, a 14 and 18. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, super high charisma. Oh, dang, yeah. Uh, so it's a standard success. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with the standard success, uh, not only do you, of course, retain your uh, silver, uh, you gain, uh, uh, yeah, you gain four silver in total. Mm. Wow, big but money. She's confused at the end because she's gained money, and she's like, she starts redistributing it as if it was cards. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> no, the, 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 other, the other guys are like, hey, you, you don't need to do that. You you won the money. You can keep it. It's okay. <laughs> um, I you didn't, in, in case you're worried, you didn't like clean them out or anything. Uh, because this is like a group of people. You're just like doing well. Okay, I'm, I'm doing a bit well. So, uh, so I keep yeah. the, the money. Okay. Yeah. Is that cool? Uh, yeah. Like? yeah, they're like, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's okay. No, none of us, uh, they sort of look around and they're like, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know that sometimes people, you know, they have a problem. And, Put down money they can't lose, but yeah, no, this is okay. Um, uh, one guy speaks up and says, "We did have a deal back at uh, back at the keep where I used to run, where if you won too many hands, you had to buy everyone an ale." But we don't, we don't, mm -hmm. we don't do that here. Um, well, I figure we wouldn't have enough ale <laughs> given the last days. Yeah, that and also it's in the morning, and Diane will not be happy if she catches this breaking <laughs> at the start of the day. <laughs> She'll be cracking um, so some skulls. She'd take it a little. She'd regard that as uh, unprofessional. But, but like, what what I'm trying to get at here is like, don't worry about it. All right. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, that, that's that's cool. And uh, I don't know. I'll pay you some alcohol one day. Uh, sadly, I couldn't bring some back yesterday, but I have asked. A merchant, a very competent merchant, to bring back some, uh, oh, I think, wine from a, reason, from a region to the north. So that's oh, really yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's to the <laughs> south. It's to the south. You know, north, south, it's, it's a bit of the same, just not at all. To, to the north, there's <laughs> like endless plains of, of nothing. Huh. Just barren wasteland <laughs> where monsters live. And some clans of, you know, kobolds and goblins and things like that. I presume that if you go far enough north, there's like a big citadel that has the boss monster in it. Uh, <laughs> the, the Lich King lives up if, there, if, yeah. We don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, if, 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 if video game tropes have taught me anything. Uh, but goofs is tied. Um, they're, no, they, they, they all seem to be in good spirits. And honestly, their spirits really improve when you tell them, like, hey, there's a wine merchant coming. <laughs> 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 Maybe she lives for this, so she's happy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to see with um, whoever manages the missions if they have the work because, I mean, eating for free ain't exactly the good deal. And we'll see how it how it goes. Thanks, y'all. So you sort of you head out, and um, um, actually, it's rather fortuitous as you uh, look for work. Uh, Diane, actually, uh, she's, it looks like she is, wasn't like directly heading towards you, but like now that you've sort of crossed her path, she's like, oh, you, <laughs> you can do stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, she, a, a um, lot of her early day is like running around, finding people to delegate stuff to, because there's a lot, there's a lot of hubbub. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, sort of, there's like a, a relatively uh, young kid falling behind her. Uh, it looked like a page, you know, a, a young, you know, a young boy. You'd guess okay. maybe twelve to thirteen. And you know, he's saying something about a uh, a busted well pump handle in the uh, keep, and how they need to get that fixed because there's a cart coming in uh, today. Um, and she just sort of looks over to you and says, "I'm oh." Uh, 
trying to remember uh, Diane's voice. It's a uh, pretty loud and authoritative. Yeah, she's. Uh, I mean, I made her Russian because it's just the the most fitting thing. But you can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I can't do Russian. I'll do a vaguely uh, Eastern European, I guess. A, sure. Or American accent. Um. Oh, hello, uh, Mary Hoof, right? Um. Oh yes, uh, yes, Diana. Uh, um. Well, I was actually going to look for jobs. Seems that uh, this little guy has something on his hands. Oh, okay. Wait, okay, yes. Uh, two big questions. One, can you fix a pump, like a well pump? Uh, no, I can help. Okay, okay. That's, I mean, honestly, not the worst thing in the world. There are other people. Number two, uh, there is, I have a, a new person who came in, uh, a dwarven architect. Her name is Lockhart Spock. Uh, she is looking for reliable adventurers, reliable surveyors, she says. He is in the dungeon. Uh, the dungeon? Yeah, what, what, what it's weird. That? She says she says it's the only place where she can think properly. What a weird, weird dwarf. Okay. Uh, okay, I can, I can stay with uh, them. Wait, he, she's an architect now. Cannot she fix the pump? No, okay, so, uh, sorry, I apologize for the confusion. The pump is a separate thing. The architect uh, has her own job for you. Okay, uh, I can figure this out. Um, very well. Uh, well, thank you, good luck for the pump. Uh, I figure we'll figure something out. All right. And sort of as you sort of head out, um, you still sort of have to pass through the courtyard to get into the dungeons. But as you do... Mm. Sure enough, the wagon arrives. So yeah, you know, you either, you know, you hear the guards call out their commands and make various signals. You know, they, they raise the gates, and yeah, it, it's a covered wagon. It's a very, uh, it's a very weather beaten looking thing, as you know, a lot of the uh, merchant caravans which make their way up here are. Uh, there's a very grizzled, uh, elderly looking fella. Um, you'd guess he's probably in his middle age, uh, fifty to sixty human, uh, who is sort of holding the reins. Next to him uh, might be either a partner, uh, is is a much younger woman wearing like a uh, if if you if you've ever seen like a coon skin cap like with like the raccoon tail off the back, um, she's wearing that and holding like a crossbow. Um, That's amazing. Like, yeah, <laughs> she is literally riding shotgun, uh, and you know there's a sound of, of commotion, you know, and you see a couple people hop off the back, including. Uh, Vent, your character. Could you describe them, please? Oh, you want me? Okay. Um, so I, I changed my, my mind. I'm not a dwarf anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have made a bugbear. And what maybe the... maybe he was a uh, a member of the people guarding this thing. He's been a mercenary for a little while now uh, at the at the keep. He's he's known to people here. Otherwise, you know, his his uh, striking demeanor might have thrown them off. I'm going to put up a picture. Uh, dude doesn't wear a lot of clothing. Um, he's got, like, a heavy cloak covered head to toe in fur. And he's got, like, bones and, and little animal skulls and, like, weird fetishes, like, all over him. Uh, it looks like some kind of weird shaman or something like that. You're, you're not sure exactly uh, what he is, but he carries like a bow and uh, a, a long rapier, and he's sort of hunched over, but he sort of like gets up and stretches uh, out of the out of the cart, and you know he's he stands a, a little over six foot tall when he fully stretches out, and then he kind of hunches back over to about five ten. Yeah, he he strikes a, a bit of an intimidating figure, but. Um, I don't know. So bugbears are a, a weird creature. Um, they're actually technically goblins, apparently, uh, but I don't know why. But yeah, they're covered head to toe in fur. They've got big ears. And uh, this guy, you know, he's kind of got like a, a braided beard going on with, with his weird facial hair. Uh, he's mostly black fur with, with some, some gray through it. Um, looks little older and weathered, yellowing teeth uh, that sort of show all, like, 
being big, sharp, fanged maw kind of uh, when he whenever he smiles. You see, he he grins at one of the the caravaniers and and waves as he makes his way towards the uh, towards the keep. Well, you know, Lou was waving to to the to the caravan, and then she saw this, and she's like, she's ha- she's having a pose like, is, is, is it supposed to be here? <laughs> <laughs> so she's looking um, a bit weird for a minute, and uh, you know I figured that at some point she pass near her to get in the keep, and like, she says hi. He just sort of grunts, <laughs> like, like mm, hello. <laughs> huh. He sort of just like brushes past you and walks into the keep, going up to the uh, going up to the mess hall to grab some food. Oh, uh, all right, that's that's the man. Uh, <laughs> it's a, on the way there, um, so as y'all sort of go by the carriage, um, I guess it's because y'all two are relatively close by. The the elderly man will say, "Oh, if I, you know my my old uh, joints aren't as spry as they used to be, um, if you're willing to help me uh, unload some of these crates, I, I'll pay you. Uh, I'll pay you two coppers for every crate you unload." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the the bugbear's ears perk up and he's like, turns his head around. <laughs> he's like, what? Why didn't you say that, old man? He sort of shuffles his way over uh, on his on his kind of weirdly short legs as his long lanky arms sort of hang down past his knees, uh, and he starts grabbing crates and and lit- loading them off. All right, all right. You want Mary Hoof to? Uh, I'm trying to just... look at how strong this uh, the the magic the mage on his. You're you're not very strong. Uh, mm-hmm. Ten pounds. So um, I, how much kilo is is ten pounds? I think it's like five or something like that. Yeah, somewhere mm-hmm. around there. Wait, your your maximum lift with eight strength is ten pounds? Well, no, 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 mage, it's, it's mage, mage hand. hand. Oh, with mage hand. Yeah, um, no, mage hand is is not going to yeah. pick up grades generally. Yeah, well, I'm she's sorry. She's probably trying to pick up a, a medium sized Kate <laughs> and she's gonna struggle with it. And at some point, you're gonna see a, a magic hand try to help her to raise <laughs> it and, and not be too and like with the mage hand and herself. <laughs> it works out, but it's, it's uh, <laughs> like the mage hand is yeah, holding up one end of the crate and you're holding up the other. Yeah, mage <laughs> hand is something like that. Yeah. Mage Hand really struggles with like any any sort of like uh, exercise and strength. It's like really bad at, but it's really awesome mm. at like at like tying a rope up on something. So it's like oh, instead of throwing a grappling hook, I just have my Mage Hand tie the knot on the roof of the house, and then I climb up, and it's entirely mm, so. It's for, it's pretty. Yeah, it's you know. a high dexterity in a way. Not really. Okay. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, it kind of. Um, it's it can it can be used for for basic tasks. There, like you need a specific yeah. thing in five E normally to use it to like I don't know manipulate locks and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I, it seems to be a good utility thing. Well, the way I normally run it is you can use Mage Hand, or at least for this system, because you know it's a little homebrewed. That's true. Very homebrewed. Mm-hmm. Um, Anyone can use Mage Hand to uh, sort of pick blocks at a distance. However, oh. the Mage Hand does conjure a physical hand. Um, so oh. if you want to do an arcane trickster thing, what's useful about that is it makes the hand invisible. Mm, which, right. Uh, we just don't have yeah, rules for that as of yet. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, no. But well, uh, no yeah, worries. I mean, just. Uh... Struggling with the crate and be like, ooh, okay, where do I put it? I look at the bug beer that's like probably five meters before me and having no issues. Like, <laughs> uh, okay, there. <laughs> yeah, you will. Uh, both of y'all give me, this is going to be a strength athletics. Strength athletics, you say? Uh, all right. I, I am not great at that. You're not good at athletics? No, <laughs> I'm not very strong. He's sneaky. Oh. He's a sneaky boy. Oh, um, yeah. I'm afraid uh, this is strength. That is exactly my strength score. Well, it's a success. Yo, Onevi's up here with the seven. Yo, um, y'all do. <laughs> she cheated. She used mage hand. <laughs> I no such thing as cheating here. Um, uh, yet yeah, you both do a, a pretty good job, and you are both paid. 
uh, a handsome sum of five silver each. It's five what? Um, oh, oh, we unloaded a bunch of cakes. I am a rich man <laughs> now. <laughs> well, it's it's five silver. It's half a gold. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, okay. A good chunk, though. Like, uh, it was per, per, per boxes, so it's like we, we unloaded about 20 boxes, something like that. A lot of boxes. Yeah, it, it takes you, yeah, it takes you a little bit, but you're you're doing a good job. Mm. You're you're hustling with a success on a strength True. check. <clears throat> True. All right, well, that was a... Uh, thing. I could go for a nap right now. Uh, oh, wait, I had a jump. <laughs> And she's going to do it. Uh, the oh. bear's ears perk up again at the word job. He decides to follow this satyr that's been assisting him as he sort of knuckles the small of his back after lifting all those crates. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, so you can you can follow along. Um, uh, you see that Diane is currently just like uh, trying to, she looks like she's arguing with someone about this <laughs> about this hand pump still. So you all just sort of head off on your own towards, it's just like a little stairway, um, like a little side that uh, looks like a shed, but it just sort of takes you down into the, the dungeon. There currently isn't really anyone in the dungeon, except apparently this uh, this new individual. Um, and we'll jump over to a little bit of a flavor image. Um, it's, it's a little pink, it's a little dark. You all have dark vision. Uh, I believe bugbears have try. dark vision. I do not have dark vision. Um, you're, it doesn't really matter that much for you right now. But you are having a hard time seeing much of anything. Well, uh, luckily, I am. Uh, I have the spell light, so I'm just going to cast it. Cast, yeah. So light lets you basically cause any object that you touch, or even like surfaces to glow very brightly. So yeah, you can just like. Um, cast it on. You can cast it on yourself <laughs> and turn yourself into a flashlight. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna find a, a small item on herself. She has a, a really curly, fine robes. Uh, yeah, she has a mask, so there's there's a, probably a holy symbol in that, and that would work. Just uh, take the pendant, make it uh, bright, and uh, and look uh, look out with it. See what's yeah. happening. Uh, well, it's, you you have a much easier time getting down the stairs now much less of an issue. So you sort of enter into the dungeon and it's this this person you see uh, an old dwarven woman she is sort of sitting on a chair which it doesn't look like belongs in here you would it looks like she like dragged it down here maybe from upstairs um because it looks like it matches some of the chairs you've seen in the mess hall um, mm. and she's just sort of like sitting on it smoking a pipe and he's sort of on the ground next to her and all around her are these chalk Either of you have proficiency in masonry tools or something like that? No, nope. because I'm not a dwarf. <laughs> my other dwarf I mean, was... I mean, my dwarf fair, was proficient niche. in masonry tools. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe y'all didn't go for the mason bill. The mason meta. <laughs> <laughs> what does the number mean? Besides, you can attempt just an untrained intelligence check to try to decipher some of these drawings. Nah, I've never seen them before in my life. Yeah, fair enough. This this man lived in the wilds. <laughs> yeah, the zones. Death. Oh, that means they be smart, but they mean something. <laughs> Let's see, I don't um, think I kind of uh, when you roll a two, I do want to give you a critical success. Well, it isn't so. It's 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 not non proficient. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do not have the proficiency in masonry. And uh, my skills doesn't align with that, so uh, like the closest thing I have is insight, arcana, and that's all. So like, I, I I'm I'm not proficient in that, and that's okay. I just don't get yeah, it. Yeah, it's just a standard success then. Um, mm. you you you're not like uh super knowledgeable about all this stuff, but you've like you're learned. You've you've been around. You've seen a lot. And you're like, oh, these are like uh, blueprints. She's making like sketches of like diagrams and stuff. You do definitely know that this is not like arcane or like, you know, sometimes, you know, when people are doing chalk drawings, some sort of ritual spell, that's not what this mm -hmm. is. She is like physically planning out like layouts of building. And so she sort of looks over and turns to you. Uh, she goes, oh, I'm going to understand that you're going to be my surveyor. 
Um, surveyor? Yes, yes, surveyors. You see, they're in these borderlands. There's the ruin of an ancient dwarven keep. And I really, I need to get some sketches. And or some painting, something very representational of its defenses. Oh, so that's what the drawings are about. Yes, it, I am a bit ashamed to admit it, but I, I'm not quite as talented and when it comes to certain elements of siegecraft as I would like to be. Oh, you want to make a siege? No, well, I want to prevent us from getting sieged, but it's very much the same thing. Um, oh, the, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. So, um... Mr. Uh, Mr. My dude here. That's uh, what's your name, by the way? I, I'm sort of like skulking around in the background, listening. Like, oh, oh uh, the name is Cardoom. Cardoom. Oh, that's a funny name. So I'm Mary Hoof, and, uh, and oh, nice to meet uh, you. Uh, he sort of holds out this huge, long-fingered hand. When she takes it, and she's like, "Oh, it's fucking huge for a second," and she. <laughs> She she waves it. <laughs> so um, I was said, told by Diana that I had to help this woman. I'm sure that she's gonna be cool with you doing it with me. Uh, but just uh, you know, we need to talk to her about it and uh, help this lady do anti siege things by doing by learning about sieges. I think. He, he kind of like cocks an eyebrow at, at you, and it looks a little weird because even his eye sockets are kind of fuzzy. And he kind of goes around you and just talks directly to the dwarf. You need us to do some uh, looking around out in the wastes. Yes, there is. Um, so I can. I have a. She sort of pulls out a, a bit of parchment, and she has the location of this, presumably the hold, marked on it. And she says, yes, this is Kenwater's Hold. It's an old dwarven ruin. Uh, It used to be a stronghold. And yes, I need you to journey there and make uh, various drawings or uh, paintings or something, a technical representation of the layout and deliver it back to me. He sort of nods his head and looks over at Mary of, how are you at drawing? I mean, I manage, but I'm not the best. What would uh, drawing I mean. be? What what skill would that um, use? I would, I, would allow, I would say that since this is a technical drawing, it would use uh, intelligence or dexterity, whichever one's better. And the proficiency mm. would be. I think there is an, a painter's kit. Yeah, I don't. I don't got if that. If y'all don't have, yeah, I mean that's that's fair. If you don't, uh, if you don't have proficiency in it, you can just get an artist. Uh, <laughs> there are. Oh uh, no. We're gonna have to hire a cartographer. Where's Nathan when you need him? He'd be he'd be great at this. He's great at everything. <laughs> He's great at everything. That's it's just a given. Um. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh man, maybe one of the guards will have skills in this. Maybe someone else. I don't know. Uh, I will. Well, I will say that if, if you if you speak to um, if you tell Walker to talk like, oh, we don't know how to draw. He's like, oh, I, I have an artist. I, I figured this would be a possibility because, you know, I, I'm in search of adventures, not artists. The main thing is, it's a fallen dwarven keep, so it's good. So it is a, a dangerous place. Hmm. I think we lost you there, Cog. I, I, I got, like, painting. I, I, it's good to so the for me. Yeah. Walker and Smock will say, um, I, I mean, I, I sort of assume that. I don't know to what extent y'all are conversing amongst yourselves about who has artistic ability. Um, mm, currently, we're just uh, listening intently, I think. At least uh, Mary is doing that. Okay. Also playing um, with her fur, thinking like, hey, the, the other guy is pretty furry. <laughs> 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 if y'all are both just listening, um, she'll carry on and say, uh, now I know that you two are, 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 might be more warriors or mages, not artists. If you guys don't know, if you're not great at painting, I I do have a contact for you. Uh, and it's a former assistant of mine. His name is Stevens. Um, he's a very good artist. Doesn't know how to fight at all. So you it will be your job to protect him and make certain he doesn't die. Okay. I think we can manage Stevens, that. Cool. Yeah, probably. I mean, you're pretty Obviously. big. You're, you're pretty strong. Also, uh, yeah, I have uh, something that would help, and she will sort of um, stroll over and, I guess, pull off the side of the wall. It is a folded-up easel. Now, this easel, 
has actually a mechanical purpose. <laughs> um, when you use the easel, or when some when a character uses the easel to sort of sketch or their surroundings, um, they get a plus one bonus um, because it's, it's a high piece of quality. However, moving through the easel space knocks it down, and combat combat in the easel space will absolutely knock it down. Any sort of combat adjacent to the easel will also knock it has a fifty percent chance to knock it down. So it's one of those things where um, uh, position it carefully because it'll help you draw stuff, but also it can get uh, it can get pushed over and progress can get lost. So the DM is telling us that we're going to have to protect a painter under duress. All right, good to know. <laughs> yes, I am telling you that. <laughs> There's going to be some combat mm. sketching mm. here um, because I'm a madman. All right, I understand. Uh, that's going to be interesting. All right, where's the Stevens kid? Oh, he's upstairs, uh, but uh, there's a little more that I need to talk to you about. Like I said, potentially a little dangerous. When Kenwater's hold fell, it was because it got raided. So there might not be a lot of treasure. There might not be a lot of stuff to find. Uh, a lot of valuables might be picked over. However, uh, if you complete this mission, I will pay each of you 30 gold. I will say, though, that if Stevens doesn't survive... I am going to have to deduct your pay. I mean, we want to let him, let him die. Yeah, we'll, we'll get out of there before it gets too nasty. I, yeah. I appreciate that. The, oh, one more thing. There's, okay, so as I'm sure you've noticed, water's awfully hard to come by in this environment. So, and this place was called Kenwater's Hold because apparently they found some kind of a secret underwater spring. If you can, if you can locate that, um, I'd be willing, and it's, I don't know. I mean, it was a secret very well hidden, but if you can find it, I will give you a special boon. I'm all about okay. special boons. We're looking for, what you say, a, a, a river? Water? A spring? If you can locate where the underwater spring is, you just, I just, I need you to tell me where it is in the layout. Uh, that'll, that'll be something that needs to be represented on the, uh, sort of the maps that you guys are drawing. Mm. Well, not you, Stevens, but you know, you, you think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm we need to add it into it under <laughs> uh, All right. I suppose we can try and find this spring for you. Yes. If you do, I will let you choose the first building I work upon in this keep. Oh, interesting. Maybe a proper outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> He's sort of like, rubs his chin. You know, I. Okay, that one that one's a freebie. You don't you don't need to spend your boon on that one. <laughs> like okay, I can I I can help with that, but ooh, um I was more thinking if you guys wanted um so mechanically, I am pulling some stuff from the GM's handbook. Oh. There are some mechanics for like making a base for yourself. Ooh. One of ooh. them uh, is like, oh, what build uh, do you establish? Uh, so basically, you get to choose uh, which building is getting worked on. All right. Um, so, well, let's uh, mm. let's decide that if we find the spring, yeah. if we're spending uh, time on it otherwise. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I was just trying to explain what what mechanically what is represented by that thematic. You know, I will mm -hmm. give you a boon thing. Um, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Well, that sounds interesting, but we have to find the spring first. And to find the spring, we have to find the place and then not die inside. So, so we, we'll see if we manage to do it. Yeah, we might get spanked uh, by goblins and have to leave anyway. So, <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we can always go back, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. After all, there's no, no time limit. Yeah, I mean, you know, with, with something like this, uh, sometimes multiple trips is best. I've lost a few um, yeah. companions out there in the wastes to uh, a <laughs> few different nasty creatures delving into dungeons. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, when you say that, um, uh, uh, Lockhart Spock will respond and say, well, you know, uh, it's not a huge rush. I do need to see results, some results soon. Like, I need you to, to give me some maps in eight days. Eight days. Okay, well, we have to move quick then. How many days march that? roughly? If I'm looking at the map, would this be away? Well, I, I hate to do this to you, to be either an intelligence cartography or wisdom survival. Survival it be. 
Heck yeah. Yo, let's go! I've got a 12. Let's go! Uh, yeah, you know precisely that this is uh, going to be about a two-day march. Um, if you have horses or something you can ride, it would only be a single day. Mm. Do we have horses? I don't. I'm poor. <laughs> oh, that's true. How much is a horse? They're kind of um, pricey. They are, uh, regrettably. Yes, but comfort has a price, my friends. Comfort is a price. One sec. I I'll look it up. We could buy a... No, uh, I don't think a pony would carry us. <laughs> How's doing that? A mule is eight gold. I think you can ride a mule. Uh, you will right, also I need knew... um, like a saddle and stuff like that for it. Yeah, well, uh, I think I'm not going to buy something like that right now, but uh, we could borrow one, I think. What were you going to say, Kyle? Just to remind you, that Lo uh, Lockhart Spock said she needs to see some results within eight days, not that the entire job needs to yeah, be yeah. done. So if you have to take a few trips, no biggie. Um, but it is something where it's like, if eight days pass and like you don't have anything to show her, she's going to be like, I'm going to, I got to find another guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, eight days. Mechanically, I would say. I was just going to say, mechanically, I would say uh, maybe about a floor would probably do it. Yeah. And also, to let you know, it is possible to try to rush travel. Um, I would let that be either an athletics or survival check to either push yourself to, like, march, you know, faster and longer than usual or to, like, navigate back roads. Um, rushing travel is also a bit of a gamble. You may arrive there exhausted or you may uh get lost mm -hmm. um i think two days is fine especially we're with a painter this person is not used to rough living so uh i'm not gonna just you know force march some soft city boy <laughs> into the middle of nowhere he needs to have his wits about him <laughs> if he's gonna survive out here uh but yeah i mean let's go find this painter and get the hell out of here because uh uh, Cardoom is going to go and grab some grub and some uh, rations for the road. Uh, let's let's drop two gold on some food and, and like some water rations and stuff like that. Packs everything up, throws a, a pack over his shoulder. I'm ready to go. I think we should take a bit of food for the guy, no? Oh, he can buy his own. Oh, yeah. Uh, for what it's worth, hmm. Stevens will have his own rations. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to pay to feed Steven. That would be a little... I mean, I, I, to be honest, I didn't mechanically set out how many days of rations he has. I'll just say he has like two weeks or so. Uh, he has enough for uh, all oh, One purposes. day of rations. I think it's like five silver. Are there the, uh, dogs, uh, horses at the, at the keep? Are there horses? Yeah. Um, yes, there, there are, but there aren't that many because um, in general, horses are just a, a premium item. To keep with like, how many people would you say? Uh, I'm going to say probably Diana and 10 guards. It's it's a little bit undermanned, to be entirely honest. Oh, it's it's like Diana and 10 guards total? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, there's probably like two horses <laughs> like total. <laughs> there's like five guys on patrol and five guys sleeping at any given time, basically. All right. Well, two horses would be just enough for us, but uh, they probably aren't going to give us their two horses. <laughs> no, definitely so, uh, not. We, we would have to go down to uh, the, the town and like, buy them from a farmer or something like that. Uh, well, yeah, buy from Thistle or something. Yeah, Thistleton will, will have a horse market, but not not up here. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, in which case, I think that we may want to consider making the, the detour, or maybe just on the on the... Way back. Yeah, where, where's the keep? Is it out into the wastes, or is it more back towards uh, the south? Um, the keep is out into the wastes a bit. All right. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it is... Uh, let me see. I actually need to quick double reference, take a look at your map to make certain I've got it right. Yep. I still haven't named the lake. Also, that okay. area under the Dragonback Hills is supposed to be a swamp. I, I, I never marked that just yet. Um, like where it's all dotted, it's not sand. It's a swamp. Where is it's it's uh, gr uh, Grag Keep, right? Which is the one. Oh, it's it's supposed to be Crag Keep. 
Oh, Craig. Keep it's it. definitely not um, Craig. I, keep, I, I can see that I definitely wrote a G there like a moron. <laughs> I don't, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So this, I, I, I was mistaken. Uh, it actually is due west. Due west. Due west. Yes. So it's like, uh, it's like in the hills. Yes, it is in, uh, it's sort of in the, uh, right about where uh, Dragonback Hills meets Giant Strong. Oh, that's like, that's like one day's merch. I, I've got a little thing at the top left. Oh, right, right. It says six miles. So that's, that's where sure. it would be. So like, we would just have to okay. go around the crevasse uh, and a little bit, a little ways over. It, it would be like half a day of marching, actually. You could put it in the swamp, or uh, east out towards the angle Anglewood, or north out into the wastes. I mean, that that area is somewhat charted, but not really. I, I haven't made a map of it yet. <laughs> so you see where there's that uh, river that flows from the uh, border peaks into deep water. Yep, it's sort of on that river. It would um, make sense because you would build a fortress right next to the river, right? Easy yeah, I mean, access to water. You can put a moat there. around it. Uh, so it's probably like in the foothills north of the swamp, like near to the mountains, I would say. That seems like a dwarven yeah, place think... to put a fortress. Yeah, so there will be a little bit of like wilderness uh, trekking for sure. Because there is like a road that leads all the way to Westwatch Tor. But uh, after that, we'll have to cut south along the mountains. I dig it. So you go upstairs, you grab Stevens. Um, he's just he's just a little guy. Um, is he? Uh, yeah. uh, he is he is quite literally yes a a a. It's hard to determine age on halflings because they age very gracefully, mm -hmm. all things considered. Um, but yeah, he he seems to be a relatively young halfling, um, pretty stout looking for a halfling. But even so, um, and yeah, he just has uh, he has very ink stained hands. You get the sense that he has a lot of experience when it comes to all manner of, of you know, arts and, and crafting. Uh, all right. The finery. Ah, so uh, are you the fellows that uh, Lockhart Spock, uh, she said she was going to get some rough and tumble types? That's right. We're here to uh, escort you. Ah, I can rough tumble. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Um, well, uh. I, you know, as she probably told you, I've got no real combat ability, so if things break out, I'm mostly just going to stand behind you and try not to get hit. Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> okay, I, I appreciate your understanding. Um, mm. Is there anything we need to do before we take off? You got food? I've got, I see, I, you, well, you know, oh, I hate to be playing into stereotypes, but I do have a solid two weeks of uh, halfling rations uh, for, for the trip there and back. I reckon that ought to be plenty. What's he wearing? Um, he is actually wearing some pretty humble-looking clothing. Like, uh, he, because uh, sort of in fitting with his artist sort of persona, he is actually wearing, like, a smock. And it looks like almost like a smock or, or coveralls kind of setup. And it's very, like, splattered with, like, dyes, paints... Um, mm -hmm. It's a little faded, maybe from some kind of like paint cleaner or like solvent, and he has like uh, just like a a pretty hefty tool belt, but it's got all kinds of like like very very small fine manipulation instruments. Like you see, there's like a, a small like needle. You can see there's like a tiny chisel. Actually, a set of it looks like various uh, monocles of like uh, different focuses for like looking at things under different. Um, lights or angles, small set of brushes, things like that. Beautiful. You're just going to be like, you have a cloak. You're going to want a wool cloak. It gets cold I, out there. I can get a wool cloak. Um, I don't have it on my person right now, but it should be with my pony. You're bringing oh, a pony? That's nice. Uh, well, I, uh, well, it's, it's not, okay, so it's not really my pony. It's, it's Lockhart Spock's pony. Uh, unfortunately, I do not own it, so uh, it can't come with us, um, but uh, it's, I, I just like to keep things on it as a nice large saddlebag. All right. Well, listen, we're going to have to travel light. You might have to ditch some of those tools. We're just drawn. We're not doing any chiseling. It's no worries. I can, I can uh, you know, leave some things behind and bring only, uh, it's, you know, charcoal pencil and... Uh, uh, a couple of brushes and dyes and paints, and uh, 
Oh, you've got the easel, right? Yeah, yeah, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where we've put it. <laughs> I, 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 you, you can just be like one of y'all is carrying it or you just set it somewhere safe. <laughs> That's an easel. Um, <laughs> easel? Uh, it is a device that holds up paper. Um, how can I... Oh, it's called, it's called writing when you have write. Like uh, a guy. Yeah, like a... This is an extremely basic easel. Oh. Um, Cog, Cog's got it. Basically, you, you put a, a canvas on it and, and paint it. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's like that, the, that that's... bar across the front is mm. where the canvas sits. Well, it it, it folds up. This is actually mm. a feature common to easels. It folds up into a small and carryable little package. So then, like, you can unfold it and set it back down. It's kind of like a tripod. Yeah, I, I got a tent. I can wrap it up in there with it. Amazing. Do you have it done to yourself? I I don't, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. Uh, one of those very nice sleeping bags, and it it should be pretty waterproof, and I can just sort of pull it over my head, and that's just just what I've done in the past. You can share mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that sounds like a good idea. Men men sleep together. That's that's uh, that's yeah. That, that's what I was going for. Don't worry. In which case, uh, I'm just gonna get uh, my stuff. We'll figure something out there. Yeah, let, let's get a move on. We're burning daylight. <laughs> That's the way to put um, it. As you go to depart, you are actually stopped by the cook uh, from the mess hall from earlier. So I just, I heard you were you were heading out to the west towards Dragonback Hills now. Um, uh, there's some fishmongers over from that direction. Uh, it's, a, it's a group of three. It's uh, Lester, Ariadne, and Wilkov. They were supposed to uh, bring in uh, sort of a shipment uh, earlier today, and they didn't. They were a no show. Uh, just keep an eye out. You know, if if you see see sign of them, uh, just let me know. What do they look he's like? Mildly distracted. <laughs> oh well, Lester, he's a human man. Uh, Ariadne is an elf, an elf lady, and Wilkov is a is a male halfling. Uh, you should be able to recognize them. They they you know they sort of usually travel as a group of three. They've got uh, usually a cart pulled by two oxen. And uh, usually they've got sort of a little insignia, which is just uh, it's, it's just a couple of fish, and one of them has like a like a harpoon through it, uh, and the other two are just like normal. Um, yeah, hmm. if if you if if uh, you can just make certain that they're safe, I'd be mighty. Well, this would be for the best. Yes, um, we'll keep an eye and a uh, nose out for them. Yeah, yeah. Suppose that fish is probably mighty stinky by now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it probably so. Um, it would make it perhaps much easier to track if that uh, if it comes to it. But I don't know. It could be nothing. They might just be a little ill. Uh, might uh, be spending the day back at their I don't know their home village or whatever. They don't they don't talk to me much about their. Yeah, a lot of things might happen. You know, they're on a wagon wheel. Who knows? We'd have to uh, see it to say, to know. Um. Anyways, I've thrown enough side quests at y'all. <laughs> um, first day, if you don't want to push it, uh, you can just, because you know where you need to go and you have a map, I don't think there's a huge chance you will get lost. I will say, if you want to keep your eyes out um, for the, uh, the what's his face, for, for the, uh, the fishmongers, it would be a perception or survival check. All right. Hmm. Okay. Let's yeah, see I'll, I'll keep my eyes out. Dude, we got... All right. Nope, I don't see shit. Ooh, is wisdom, I think. It is. Yeah, if it's I untrained, it's just this you, you succeed? Yep. Awesome, awesome. Um, so you are both keeping an eye out, and for the most part, you are focused just on the road, Cardoon. But, uh, Mary Hoof, you're sort of keeping a weather eye out. You're very attuned to, the, to your surrounding environment. It's sort of a, a feature of, of having spent so much time in the Feywild, and having traveled so mm. far. And there is the, the fishy smell that does uh, help, but mostly what you notice is some swerved tracks in the road. And I'm going to jump over to a new page. Uh, you see uh, what looks like a, a, a vehicle swerve to the side, but there's no vehicle. And off in the distance, you see here this this standing stone looking structure. Yeah, I, I don't know what's happening here, but like, I look at this. Pretty sure someone's just swelled here, right? Yeah, I think I smell some fish too. Uh, maybe, maybe near it. 
there's those weird stones that look like they, they that's the place where they they went, but I can't see the cards. Well, let's go have a look. Um, it's a nice place for a little siesta. At any rate, I'm I'm getting hungry. We should have lunch soon. <laughs> well, that's a good idea for sure. We could certainly explore the place and see what it's about. What it's about. Right. Well, let's okay. let's do it. Let's go have a look. Say, so, as you approach, this is sort of a holdover from your previous success. You do notice that from this sort of um, this weird standing stone structure that smell is emanating, and you see there are some very skinny, very hungry-looking coyotes, sort of like pacing around it. You would guess there are about six of them. Ooh. Uh, uh, look at this. It's like food, uh, people, uh, animals. There. I am going to just roar at the coyotes. Uh, <laughs> you can make Get out of here, uh, coyotes. <laughs> this is this is just an intimidation or animal handling check. I will say that. Uh, uh, whichever one you would prefer. Let's go intimidation. I have thirteen. All right. Yo, let's go. That is we a success. Twelve <laughs> is more thirteen. <laughs> A safe, no? Yeah, so a standard success. This unfortunately doesn't scare off all six of them. Um, three of them sort of turn tail, and the other th- and and take off. The other three kind of stay behind, um, and they are still sort of pawing and 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 barking. Um, uh, I'm going to say that unless there is something else y'all want to do, roll me initiative. All right. It- that's fine. I, uh, I I raised my arms up really high uh, and, and made myself look big, but it only scared the, the wimpiest ones. Ooh! Yeah, well, you scared me too, cool. like, you know. Ooh, not very good. However, yeah. that is a 20 initiative. What the okay. fuck? Yeah, I'm, I'm quick. and... Nice. What's Onevi's initiative? Or uh, dexterity? 11. <laughs> plus 11. It's uh, 20. Is it 20? 8 plus 11. Oh, that's 19. These guys are, let's see, they don't have that great of it. Oh, that's a pretty good roll, though. God damn. Hold up. Well, they're, they're, they're still not that powerful, unfortunately. Um, they have a div 12, so that is a 27. Yeah, I mean, that beats uh, either of us, I am no struggling. Heck, Nabbit, I am really struggling with setting up initiative. Uh, left hand side, there's a thing that looks like a clock. The thing, the thing is, though, we need tokens. And then you need to right-click the token and and say add turn. <laughs> Otherwise, okay, then I you can't really am do not it. going to worry about that. All right. Yeah, then I'm not going to worry about that right now. As these guys got initiative first, uh, I'm going to roll an attack for one of each of them. The first one is going to be on you, Cartoon. Okay, that's gonna miss. So they're unmodified <laughs> strength, so that's not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, the second one is on Mary Hoof. And remember, you aren't surprised, so if you want to do, like, a reaction thing, you can. That's also good. It's another 18. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, what? Yeah, this last one is, is going to be on Stevens. No, um, not Stevens! And I'm sorry. Oh, what the Dude, fuck? How do I roll three <laughs> times in a row? <laughs> Dude, roll 20 has the weirdest dice, man. Like The, the chances of that anything. happening is, is a legend die. <laughs> That's yeah, astronomically small chances. It, yeah, I but, don't understand it, but okay. Our, our yeah, RNG, also, I wonder, oh. RNG tends to clump on, on World 20. Yeah. Oh. You get, all, get all a lot of, of the same result. Yeah, uh, all, all three of them rush you. They try to bite, but you guys are like, these are like, these are like dogs or like, like actually they're coyotes. So a lot of them are smaller than, than dogs. So, and, and they're, they're pretty hungry looking. So they're not that strong. So it's actually not that hard for you to just like, like push them away. Or like dodge out of the way when they like go at you. So it's 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 like this is troublesome, but you get the sense that you know before you were like, well, maybe I scared the wimpiest away, and now you're thinking like, maybe <laughs> no. I scared away the ones that that were not hungry, and not <laughs> weak, the most desperate. Uh, and it is back to y'all's turn. Uh, I guess I'm up first. Cardum the clanless will cast. Shield of Faith uh, on himself. He chants and, and holds one of his uh, bird skulls uh, on his various belts that are all over him. Does a little dance as he's pulling out his rapier and sort of a shimmering barrier of force appears in front of him. Uh, and he's going to go and run over towards the uh, coyote that is attacking Steven and try and stab it. And all right, go ahead and make an opportunity attack if you want on me. I don't care. 
I gotta save Steve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, that is, st if you have an AC of over one, that isn't going to hit. So yep. it <laughs> I'm good. Um, all right. Uh, all right. Great. I will stab at it from Hell's Heart. I right. stab at thee. Yo, that'll definitely hit. Yeah, its AC is not that good. It's it's pretty good, but it's um. So yeah, roll me your damage. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, um, it's it's a situation where like, okay, you have good news is you have gotten the attention of this creature. It's it has is now focused on you as the biggest threat. But in doing so, you have sort of like sliced at its ear. You haven't done a whole lot of damage to it. <laughs> um, oh, Nebby. Uh, Mary Hoof is up. What do you want to do? All right. Um, so I wish to go uh, how far away from the stone structure? Uh, I'm going to say that you are currently 20 feet away from the stones. Okay. So 20 feet is about three, five meters. I'm going to try. Uh, I don't know if I have enough movement to do that, but I'm going to try to uh, go near the, the stone structure and jump on it. Uh, yeah, you have... 30 feet of movement, so you can, to avoid taking an opportunity attack, because you currently have this wolf sort of, it's like, not wolf, sorry, coyote that's mm. sort of hounding you. Uh, basically, mm. you spend an action to, like, uh, sort of avoid it, and then you run 30 feet, and you would be able to climb up on that, like, raised stone surface. All right. Uh, that's good with me. I, I just want um, to remind you that he's a satyr. Satyrs oh, have yeah, mirthful leaps. leaps. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah so you can jump up. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I mean, if she can, easy. because <laughs> you add one d eight feet to your jump, <clears throat> uh, so you can add like one feet. <laughs> hey man, one uh, foot is still pretty yeah. high. One foot vert. It's well, it's yeah. it's one foot in addition to your normal movement. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I'm trying to. I I don't know. You I, if you roll really well, you might be able to vertically jump up onto like that raised platform up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if by you were to default, roll like an eight on the dice. By default, Sorry, I can jump eleven feet off the ground uh, if I reach up and grab, uh, or two if I don't, uh, and then I can roll one d eight to add to the to the thing. Your your normal high jump is a two foot vert. Yep. So uh, three. I'm at a total of five by uh, normal for normal, and uh, eleven to try and grab the the surface and, and hold myself up. Uh, 11 plus two, 3, so that's 14. Is that enough? It is 10 feet in the air. So you oh. can jump 2 feet. This adds 5 feet. Um, <laughs> and you're like about... You've got a, you can basically reach 3 meters up in the air. Sorry, 3... Uh, sorry, you can reach about 3 feet in the air. So you are 2 feet short, unfortunately. But you can still just get inside this structure, like the center of it. Well, what I can do is simply grab the thing. So, like, I jump five feet high. So that's the distance between me and the ground. And then I use my arms to get the surface, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, I will say, unfortunately, I hate to do this, but to hang on would probably be an athletics check. Can't <laughs> <laughs> I just, like... Hold myself up. That's athletics, um, man. You're you're trying to pull yourself up a, a a ledge with no like footing at all. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't to, make sense. Trying to yeah, trying to catch not only catch your full body weight but also physically lift yourself up. Yeah, that is going to be uh, that is just a just a. I just need a standard success. Walks. You succeed. Yeah. You are <laughs> up. <laughs> You are you are up and you are safe. You are completely out of the coyote's reach. Um, Woo! <laughs> succeeds by two. Uh, I don't believe it. Yeah. yeah? No, it's a good, good. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I, sometimes I, I can be a, a little a little persnickety in calling for a lot of rolls, but no, it's, it's going a good right. thing when a cool move pulls off. Um, <laughs> One thing you do also realize now that you've cleared the distance is uh, you hear commotion from inside this structure, and you see that the actually the three people you're originally after they are inside uh, they are inside of this stone structure. They have essentially um, mm. taken shelter within it. Um, okay, so she, she's just gonna say we're here to help. I suppose I could guess, but the fight's almost over. Um, yeah, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to do it yet. 
<laughs> so you you sort of cleared you're on this ledge. Uh, Stevens, his turn, his whole turn is just going to be dodging. He's just he's just trying to not get hit. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, now, this does mean that all three of them are going to swarm you, Cardoom. I'm ready. I'm going to roll 3d20. <laughs> um, let's see. Some of these might hit. What is your AC, Cardoom? Currently, uh, plus 10. Mm-hmm. Plus 10? Yeah. God, damn. Real good at this. Um, yeah, none of these are going to hit. So you are what what's you've got like a great sword as your weapon, right? I use a rapier. A rapier. Uh I haven't shown you so my you, sheet, have you? Let me send you my sheet. No, not yet. Actually, uh, that's something I, I should have looked my, at. My my character is real dumb. He he has barbarian right. unarmored defense, con plus two, <laughs> simple and martial weapons and greater magics. Uh and then obviously I, an I took combo. strength and constitution uh, for, for the Armored defense, and then I also have 16 constitution and dexterity, so like my base AC is eight when I'm naked, so that's why he yeah. just wears like a cloak and a bunch of like weird fetishes. The cloak is just to keep him I mean, dry, that is, it is what the system is for, so yep, just you know, weird, weird combos of stuff. I want to make him also have a, an animal companion, so once we've got that shit figured out, I'll have him like summon the spirit of his ancestor or something like that. Yeah, we'll make that happen. Um, summon the spirit of your ancestors into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, uh, the the system that we're working on does. I I think you could use it to have like NPC companions, right? Like pretty easily. Like you could make it into a person. It could be like a demon. It could be a dragon. Like we're me and Cog are kind of working on it together. And, and uh, what we have so far is so flexible that you could basically make any kind of companion, which is kind of rad. I prefer yeah, not my be- version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> we, I'll, I'll summon my grandfather, but he's a fucking. Dog. <laughs> he's just a he's just a pug. He's gonna give me <laughs> give me advice. It's 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 something you used to torment uh relatives you didn't think that much. As you summon them into the body of a pug, yeah. and it's like you now have to work to breathe. Um, hey Uncle Roger, <laughs> remember that time when you fucking took my nose? Okay, uh yeah, but goofs aside, you uh you are sort of you have your rapier out, which is an unusual choice uh for, for one such as yourself, but you are able to sort of honestly it's not even like you're fighting these because it's not like they're like you know, crossing blades with you or anything. It's more just that, like, you occasionally, like, thrust it at them, and it's sort of, like, the fear in their eyes is sort of keeping them from, like, leaping at you. You're sort of holding them at bay at the right. moment. Well, see, what I figured, well, A, having a finesse weapon is kind of part of the build, but also, like, I figured having, like, five-foot-long arms and then, like, a really long rapier, you're, like, the best <laughs> rapier duelist of all time at that point. <laughs> It's it is it is a frightening thing to behold because you, yeah, the, the step and thrust can be a, quite a scary thing with bugbear limbs. Um, at any rate, yeah. So that's all their turns. It is back around to y'all. What do you want to do? All right, uh, Cardoom, you are up first. Yeah, it's me. It is me, Cardoom. I'm going to pull out my shield to make me see even more ridiculous. Okay. Um, now I do want I, again. Uh, I hate to be a, a, uh-huh. a stick in the mud. Donning a shield is an action. Is it? It is. Donning a shield in combat. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Oh, yeah, no. It's, it's an action. Okay, you're correct. It, normally, an item interaction is inherent, but this has a special rule. This is true. Uh, All right, that's Donning. fine. Yes, I will, I will get out my shield as my action. <laughs> I mean, it's still, still a worthwhile thing to do because it raises your AC up to two. <laughs> um, or, Plus uh, 12. Um, Plus 12. Yeah, it's really good. I, I don't, I think to hit you now, they have to roll a critical success. Hooray. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, because I don't think, yeah, they can't actually, they have no other way to do it. But at any rate, um, that's your action. Mary Hoof, you are up. She's looking up from uh, where she is and she's like, well, this is a thing that's happening. She's going to cast Bane on the three dogs. Whoa. Ooh, all right. Uh, so this happens. You don't need to roll for this, but the three of them need to make a charisma save, I believe. I'm looking it up right now. Charisma saving throws. All right, yeah, you're all right. That's kind of smart. One of them makes it, actually. Not the most charismatic of, <laughs> of opponents, but a six is a pretty good roll uh, on, a, on a roll under system. Well, Still, that hits two of them. What does it mean as you cast Bane on these starving coyotes? Well, it's a bit sad. Uh, what does it look like? It's mostly, you know, 
incantation, she uses a, a sign of the of the Far Wanderer to protect her in a way to say like that's the destiny of, of where it of where it goes and, and what does it look like? Well I don't know how magic looks like in this world, but I figure that uh, it can be represented by a few few holy symbols just appearing on them and a bit a bit like lowering their morale in a way. Yeah, you sort of present the holy symbol and there's in a weird way it's like in in a very like exorcist fashion, um, because of the power <laughs> yeah. you put into this, the, the magical power, it's almost like it repels them, it repulses them, and they are baned. What is the symbol of the far traveler? Is it like a boot? I think it's uh it's a star or something like that. Because mm. uh Maybe. he's coming from the stars or something like that. I think it's like a I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think you're right about that. It's meant to represent like, you know, the eternity of, of wonder. I just think it would be really funny if you put like boots on them and then they re- reacted the way that dogs do when you put boots on them. <laughs> <laughs> your your bait is just like, yeah, it's just sticking a sticking boots on all of them and now they're like stepping awkwardly. <laughs> yeah, they're like, Oh, I don't I don't like it. Why is there something on my feet? Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's All a black right. circle uh, with seven stars. And and for his action, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Stevens is just going to disengage and just get out of there. <laughs> Run away! Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's he's not he is not a combatant. Um, see, I might let's see. I can have them roll. Like I said, they're only going to be able to hit if it's a critical success. But you know what? We'll 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 roll those dice. Okay, there's a crit success <laughs> and a crit fail. <laughs> So one of them does actually bite you. Oh um, my this god. Two, this is 2d4 damage. It's 5 piercing damage. It hurts. And, uh, let's see, they have... Um, just because of the bane, they might be rolling at minus um, X, depending on the I think roll. critical success always succeeds. Oh, so, okay. This yeah. I, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I don't think your bane really matters very much in this situation. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Um, it's, it'll help if they go after Steven, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh wait, I think Bane does actually help because I believe it lowers their damage. Um, uh, oh, no, wait, Bane subtracts D4 oh. from attack rolls and saving throws. Right, you are. Um, okay, so it is still five damage, but uh, give me a strength based. Oh dear, a strength save, you say? Yes, strength based save. I should have said. Um, it's as a success. It leaps on you. you succeed. It leaps on you to try to knock you prone and drag you to the ground, and it does not work. You oh, are scanning okay. up. You are resolute. <laughs> I just do that like lean back um, thing, but my arm is so long that I just like push myself back up. No problem. Yeah, it's 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 like a weird kip up. Because <laughs> yeah, like your your shield arm, it's like they kind of took you surprise, and it sort of just like springs around, and like a slinky just shoots you back up again. Um, uh, and. We are back to you, Cardu. Oh, it's back to me. All right, now I'm ready. Yeah, I am prepared. Oh, wait, actually, also, the one who crit failed fell prone. They died, you got out of the way, and now they're prone. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going yeah. to uh, step on the chest of the prone one and attempt to stab him in the throat. Give me an attack uh, roll with advantage. Oh, it is with advantage. Again, advantage. I get to roll again. All right, that'll be a success. Success. Uh, give me some damage. Come on, not one again. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't one. <laughs> ah, shit. So you've dealt two damage to this fella. Um, we're making some progress. Mary Hook, we are back to you. Well, uh, uh, there's one dog still in the fight, right? Or are they still all here? Three of them are still here. Okay, very well. Uh, you can see that one of them has taken... Uh, mm-hmm. Two of them are wounded. Um, one is only very lightly wounded. One is wounded a little more heavily. Uh, in which case, uh, we are going to be to be casting Sacred Flame on like one of them, probably one of the wounded ones, yeah. or maybe the not um, wounded one, rather. No, Let's go for the not wounded one. one. Yeah. Okay. Eight. So this happens automatically. I roll a d20, and I will also roll a d4 because that might prevent it from succeeding. Oh, true. So we have to have spells happen automatically. Yeah, Shadowrun, this is be not. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's good damage, too. Yeah, on the D8, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we like it. Unfortunately, I'm, yeah, they, even with Bane, they very on that set. Yeah, that's they a have ton. Maybe, if I think exactly, yeah, 
Um, I yeah, believe it's that, dexterity of twelve. So they are they they do avoid your. They are all right, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and you do hear uh, some people calling uh, towards you, Honevi, or I should say, Maryho, from the inside of this rock structure, and they say, "Like, hey, what, what's what's going on? Who who are y'all?" Uh, from the keep. Um, yeah, you see sort of uh, yeah, a, a couple people with um, sort of, uh, they, they look like a sort of like bill hooks or harpoons. Um, not something probably intended for combat, though. They, you know, they're, they're sharp and, you know, at the end of a long stick, you know, um, useful. Sort of poke their head out uh, and they go, who, 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 are, who are you guys? You, from the keep? Yes, from the keep. Uh, all right. Uh, you need to make a persuade. I don't think you need to make a test in this instance. I think he, uh, this fell is just going to try to aid you, and he's just going to roll an attack roll. This is throwing. Uh, let's see. With even with their AC, actually, I think with their AC that is going to miss because they have a three um, in their armor class, and this guy's got a twelve in dexterity because he's not that good of a warrior. So he does throw an attempt to aid y'all, but unfortunately goes wide. <laughs> um, none of those hit. Yeah. Okay. So the you are still fending off these coyotes, and it is back to you, Cardoom. All or right, Cardoom. Well, I mean, I've got one thing I can do. Yeah. Uh, is the coyote still prone, or has it risen? At this point, it has risen. All right. Uh, we're still we're still going to go after that one that I stabbed slightly better. Yeah, the wounded one. Okay. 16 is my dexterity. I think that means I hit, right? Well, but their AC is treated as oh, a negative modifier. Oh, shit, that's right. So I, forgot. I forgot. You do miss on this one. Yes. That's unfortunate. Um, but we are back around to you, Mary Hoof. All right. Very well. Uh, since that the Holy Flame doesn't work, so... <clears throat> you, can, you can try it again. Yeah, um, you can always keep, have to, keep trying. Yeah, because um, they have to save against each casting of it. She, she's probably going to try and... Uh, let, let's have fun with this. Uh, use uh, Channel Divinity with the trickster thing that makes a copy of yourself. <laughs> oh! oh. Busting it out! <laughs> Dang! Well, yeah, she can, so let's go. What do you want your double to do? Well, she's gonna uh, concentrate and send send the, the double to go uh, near the wolves and try to make it to 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 feign like uh, oh no, I am badly positioned and you could bite me. <laughs> she like trips over and does the Family Guy thing. Ah, <laughs> my ankle! <laughs> ah, exactly, that's amazing. <laughs> I feel okay, so. I do want to warn you, normally speaking, once you're, uh, basically any time your illusion would take damage, it will fade away. But, oh, would it? Okay. Um, I think so. Or at least, I think it will at least be obvious to the folks attacking it. That yeah, that, that's correct. They know yeah. once they've hit it that it's not real. Right, right, right. That makes sense to me. Um, <laughs> so... I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that depending on how you want to do this, you could try to you can try to bait them into all attacking you, but it might not last to that long because once they sort of bite into it and they realize there's nothing there, it might. Hey, a, a free round of, of no attacks on me sounds good. Yeah, that is okay true. Me. <laughs> gives gives okay, so our, yeah. our friend more time to escape as well. I'll I'll yell mm -hmm. over to uh, Stephen. Be like, get to the rocks! Those guys will protect yeah. you! <laughs> uh, yeah, you see that actually currently they are like throwing down like a fishing line. <laughs> and he's just like <laughs> scrambling up, getting back on the rocks. Um, oh my god, he cuts his fucking hands open with that Jesus. It's, 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 you know, oh, that's a good point. It would be very dangerous. It's it's super they, throw thin. they throw him a normal rope. <laughs> I mean, I, they're not going they to have... mono wire this guy. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Just rips his hands open. Ah! Like, we're not going. <laughs> then he can't paint. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> you come back and you're like the dumbest thing happened. <laughs> 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 they, they're just going to help him off with the normal rope. That's a good point. Uh, they they're fishermen. They would know to not throw a guy a fishing line. Assume competence. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, this uh, double appears, and it is. Like, it is a 
perfect illusion. It looks like you, it smells like you, it sounds like you. And these are coyotes. They don't have investigation. <laughs> <laughs> so they fall for it just automatically. Um, and it's like it's it's like it's like it's running along like, oh, I, I leaped down from the, the, the rocks. Oh, and then I stumbled and I skid my knee. Ooh, I am hurt and lying prone. Amazing. And, yes. um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so the three of them, I will roll because it is technically possible for all of them to miss their attacks and for none of them to realize the illusion. Uh, I'm going to roll two more. Um, okay, I'm afraid that one of them does, they, they, one of them does realize, so, so it does sort mm. of cease to... Man, these coyotes suck. <laughs> well, they're fairly good at what they do. But it does mean that they <laughs> <laughs> that powerful though he's unfortunately like, can you prevent yourself from getting swarmed mm-hmm. um but you scared away half of them so now it's just like you can just like beat them down <laughs> <laughs> so that's their turn it is up to you car doom and this is a special ability that is from invoke duplicity mm-hmm. um because it is just inherently distracting you do get advantage on attacking all of them let's go uh, let's go on Mr. Two Damaged One. Uh, what the fuck um, was that? Oh, that was D100. You, you hit two D uh, on accident. No worries. All right, um, we got we got a hit. Uh, we'll need some damage. Big, Big D8. Money. All right, seven. five damage this time. They are up to seven H. Okay, yeah, they are looking real bad. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh, not good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they are still alive, not for too much longer. Mary Puff, you are up. All right, so uh, I'm gonna make. Uh, so, what is the thing that lets me do sound? I think it's uh, thaumaturgy. Oh, thaumaturgy! Yeah, thaumaturgy yes. can make noises and stuff. All right, I so think I'm... minor illusion. Yeah, but thaumaturgy can also do it. Minor illusion could work too. How does uh, minor? Can I make my my uh, front here look bigger with minor illusion? Um, that's not really how it works. You could make a very loud mm-hmm. noise. Mm. And you can like amplify it's, your voice a lot. Generally speaking, minor illusion is great at making it look like something exists which doesn't. If you really want, you can push the limits of this and try to sort of create an illusory sort of larger cardoom. However, mm. doing so will require two things. You'll have to spend a spell slot on it, and they okay. will get to make an intelligence investigation check to notice that this is a trick. What if he just gives me a really tall hat? <laughs> um, you can give him a big hat if you want. You, you don't have to roll for that or do anything for that. Um, uh, no, I think I'm going to go for a minor illusion. And uh, the illusion would be a sound of something heavy coming in, you know, like a rhino or something like that. If you want, you could make perhaps a nature or an animal handling check to simulate the cry of a predator. Mm, okay, yeah. Animal hunting would yeah, work. Or, or something like that, or something like the approach of like a bigger animal or a bigger predator. You want to use that mm. to like scare them off. All right, this works. Animal handling, I'm at 14, I have six. Uh, All right. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so you, you're, again, you're pretty well traveled. Um, you, you know, you're keeping them away, but these guys are pretty relentless, but you see they're, they're getting worn down. One of them looks very wounded, very close to death. So you simulate the cry of, um, I'm going to say you, you, you simulate the sound of a, of a, what is it called? An on keg, hmm. which is like this, these, these very like, uh, that you find them sometimes out here in the wastes. They're like these like, predatory insects. They're like giant ant lions. You, oh, you, you mimic the shaking of the ground and, and their weird insectoid cry. And at this point, these coyotes have not had a lot of luck. They've taken a lot of damage. Most of uh, their pack has already run away. At this point, they just flee. <laughs> and that, that's going to end the combat because they're, they're not having a great time right now. Will Kong, or at least the halfling, I should say from earlier, sort of peeks his head out and goes, Oh, are they gone? Yeah, we scared them off. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness, thank goodness. Um, sort of dusts himself off, um, says, well, we, were, we had some trouble. We, uh, we were moving our goods, but the wagon wheel broke, and then these animals came, and we had to take shelter over here in these rocks. Are, are any of you good at, at uh, Wainwright's wagon repair? Um, looking to, the, to, to Stephen. Uh, I think, uh, what's in it? To the, to you the, ever uh, fix a wagon, uh, Stephen? I mean, I can give it a try. 
Oh, that's actually Stephen might actually be able to do that. Um, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> he's got like <laughs> tools. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, I didn't bring my my toolkit with me, but uh, if you guys have equipment, I can give it a shot. And he will make a roll. He has an intelligence of fourteen. So he's actually got pretty good odds. I would say that he counts... I'm going to say that he's half proficient. Uh, so if he rolls a two or better. Mm. It's a great success. Um, yeah, it's not a critical success. Um, but he is able to get the wagon working again. He's like, oh, well, you know, I do consider myself to be a, a bit crafty. What, what happened? Did the, did the wheel fall off? It, it looks like they just hit a rock and the wheel broke. And they were just doing repairs. Ah, uh, um, gotcha. And it, it looks like they had two oxen. One of them looks like it isn't doing too well. It looks like it was attacked by coyotes. <laughs> oh, no! Um, <laughs> uh, I will... Is it? Does it look like it's bleeding out? Um, it, it doesn't look like it's bleeding out, but it does look injured. Um, it doesn't look like on the brink of death. Because it's, it's a big animal. It's, you know, it's an All right. I am um, going to use medicine uh, yeah, to attempt to uh, bind its wounds. Right. As I'm limping on Are my leg using... that got savaged. Are oh, you doing all right, uh, by the way? Yeah, I, I just sort of like tied a, an old dirty rag around it. Oh, I'll, right. I'll, I'll yeah. tend to myself in a moment. Let me try on this oxen first. <laughs> yeah! Uh, oh, in... that oxen is That's dead! It. Okay. So, mechanically, if oh, you no. crit fill a medicine check, you do deal damage to your target. <laughs> oh, no. um, let me roll. Oh, no. Well, you, you don't hurt him that. So here's what happens. You are trying to treat this ox, but it is so spooked that, like, as you're trying to, like, sew a wound shut, it, like, starts and freaks out. It's, it starts to, like, yank around, and the stitches that you've been trying actually get caught in part of, like, the bridle. And oh, then no. it ends up, like, pulling on it, and it actually, like, widens the wound worse, and you're like, oh, this is bad. Oh, sure, keep me steady. <laughs> you don't think this oxen will die, but it's it's gonna leave a it's gonna leave a nasty mark. Um, Hell, you you two calm him down. I'm gonna go. May, maybe it's the smell of blood's got him a little spooked. I'm gonna go try and treat myself as well. I well, can try and do that. Deck, don't have it be a net twenty. Um, okay, I fail. <laughs> but you don't make things. It's a failure. It's not a crit failure. Um, you know, you're buying things up, but it doesn't seem like it's much better than it was before. It might just need some time. Huh? Right. In which case, maybe, you know, she's going to try to calm the beast down. And, uh, you know, I figure she uses uh, her, her illusion to, to do two things at the same time and and uh, have him calm down and pet him at the same time or something like that. Then she looks back to, to kill them and be like, huh, okay, so are you... Doing well, or I could, I, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, but I could use some help keeping the beast calm while I stitch him up. You think you can give me okay. assistance? I could certainly try. Uh, just oh my god, rest. you are better at medicine than I am. This fight not being proficient. Hey, I'm not gonna take this for flight. I don't care. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> roll twice. I'm gonna roll with advantage. Uh, if that's okay, GM, I think that that counts as helping. I would, yeah, I would accept that. I will ask, uh, do you have mm -hmm. a healer's kit? I do not. I'm going to say that you think that if you were to try again, mm -hmm. you might need two things. Is Either that... a healer's kit, or you might need a little bit of healing magic. Yeah, how, how are you doing on uh, magic there? I'm, I'm run dry, unfortunately. <laughs> um, well, I... Can practice some magic. The issue is that there is an ox and there is you. I'm fine. We gotta get this ox up and about. Oh, the okay. needs its fish. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we we can we can work with that. Let's do it then. And so she's gonna, you know, uh, use her illusion to keep the ox calm. And with her actual form, she touches the 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 ox from the side. And starts concentrating to heal his wound and, and call upon the, the Far Wanderer so that he ensures that this, this shipment can go, get where it needs to be and continue to go on far and away. All right. Um, I'm going to roll. Well, yeah, you healed a, a fair amount. Um, it's looking a lot better. And uh, yeah, it has closed the wounds enough. Essentially, the way that healing magic works in D&D &D is that it sort of accelerates the natural healing process. Mm. Um, 
So the wound is closed enough that another uh, medicine check can be attempted. All right, let's try it. Yo, we got a success, baby. <laughs> yeah, this much better. You pretty much got this. This if you're willing to spend a full hour, um, you can basically get this oxen right as rain. A full hour. Um, oh my god. All right, that's fine. Well, it's, it's like a short rest, essentially. Um, it's the the full hour is not necessarily spent uh, doing the medicine. It's to make certain that the ox is covering already. Right. It's fine. Um, it it lets me <laughs> justify taking animal handling uh, as my next advancement, <laughs> so that I can All right. get an animal buddy eventually. Uh, All right. Um, yeah. So you spend an hour. You have completely healed um, at this point. The ox. Um, it is. You know, I mean, obviously, uh, within the, the thematics of the world, there's still, like, some injuries and wounds, but it is healing as good as it ever has, and it looks like it will have a long and healthy ox life in front of it. Uh, yeah, y'all, uh, having done this, and, and with the uh, the wagon properly repaired, unless there's anything else y'all want from them, the uh, fishmongers will begin to resume their path to the keep. I'll take one of them fish. I don't give you a fish. <laughs> um, I just grab like a trout and just like carry it with me. All right, this counts as a day's ration, but you will need to eat it today. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I throw it in a sack um, and like tie it tie it to one of my many belts. Yeah, if you forget to eat that, you just lose the ration. <laughs> um, it is not. It is not uh, good for lasting. He sort of like rubs his rubs his hands together and he's just like mm, having fish tonight. <laughs> when we when we took the decision to come to this bunch of rocks, we said that it was time to eat. So let's go, you know. Yeah. Oh, true, true. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll 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 get a fire stoked up and I'll I'll fry my fish up just like <laughs> so on a sort stick. Of, <laughs> they sort of continue on ahead. You, uh, your crew, Stephen, as you sort of you can actually set up camp right here in the the Standing Stones um, or nearby, and just yeah, cook yourself a fish. I think uh, I think you, camping here. I mean, we spent an hour with the oxen, and I think we were probably already marching for probably a few hours. So we can set up camp here for the night, I suppose. Get an early right. start tomorrow, right at sunup. Well, that um, makes sense. Who is watch order if you are uh, staying the night. You take first watch. I can see it in the dark. Okay, I can do that. I, so he like he cooks his fish until the outside is like completely burnt. And then he's got these like long, filthy nails, and he like pulls all the skin off, just eats the inside, and then he curls up in his cloak and goes to bed. He's like, "Gotta get some sleep. I'll see you in a few hours. Wake yeah, me up when yeah, the moon's yeah. at its zenith." I, I, I'll do that. So you you spend a little time, and you your night is uneventful. Um, not a whole lot to see, not a whole lot to encounter, and. Uh, next morning, y'all have taken a long rest, so you restore uh, your your spent resources. Fortunately, I get, um, I get my hit points back. I don't know how healing works on this uh, version. Um, you can, after a full night's rest, you can make another medicine check to try to patch yourself up. All right, I got a twelve, and my wisdom's twelve. Is that a success? And meet it, you beat it. Yes, uh, you can restore you. Normally, when you succeed on a medicine check, you can restore uh, which your intelligence or your wisdom, whichever is higher. Either way, you have pretty much restored all your HP. I, I assume that you took five damage, you're fine. Yeah, I took only five. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, for, I guess I, I'm going to flavor this as... Um, it's basically just you checking up on, you know, sort of the bandaging and the treatment you did yesterday to see if it, like... Lasted, and it's like you, you know they, the bandages need replacing, but you're like, yeah, this is healing up quite nicely. I will be right as rain <laughs> soon enough. You just like rub some dirt on it. <laughs> That's good. I, probably not literally that. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that your character is, is I, I, has some kind of medical knowledge that is above dirt rubbing. Dude, he's um, he's a shaman. Like he just he does weird fucking. Voodoo rituals and shit. Yeah, but it's those like weird plant. rituals, but they work. <laughs> yeah. An intrinsic bond with the land. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's oh, like you, you take uh, a plant, and to anyone, like, average, it looks like a fucking guy taking plants and putting them in his leg. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but to you, you know... Yeah, like, I, I, like, I like chew up some stuff. leaves and, like, shove them in the wound and tie the bandage back up. That'll be fine in a couple hours. <laughs> it's, it's sort of how I imagine it working, yeah. 
Y'all can resume your journey. This is the second day of your travels. So y'all continue on after a day of travel. It is mostly an eventful. Let me ask how you are attempting to travel. Do you want to travel uh, more swiftly, more stealthily, or uh, more slowly and cautiously? I think we're probably, I'm probably keeping us at a pretty good clip until until maybe we start getting more into the wilderness. Like at the moment, we're just on a road, right? It is patrolled occasionally, so well, some, yeah, something more than coyotes are... would be. Yeah. Maybe unusual here. Yeah, at this point, you would be uh, looking at sort of the map. You'd be sort of leaving the road at this point and entering into, like, the Dragonback Hills and starting okay. to enter the swamp. Beautiful. Um, so you are getting in the wilds. Basically, right. it's a question of, like... Um, normal pace. You know, uh, normal pace? Yes. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah, give me, I'm going to say... Actually, a, uh, isn't Mary... Is Mary Huff? No, Mary Huff doesn't have survival. But she does have good wisdom. She's actually the one that should probably be leading us. <laughs> <laughs> probably yes oh, um, i'm going to say to uh yeah as you get into the swamp there is uh you know the the ground is 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 really damp and it, it is slowing your travel a bit so i am going to say this is a survival roll or normal pace yep go ahead i i am yeah. not the one to roll this very well you I are smarter it than less me as, i picture it less as her being smart and more like following the principles of the far wanderer and, and it kind of works out for her but it doesn't, but it doesn't work out for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so i will give you all so it's a failure yeah okay i will give you all two choices you can mm. uh you can slow down and it'll take you an extra day to get there or mm. you can sort of rush and you will arrive on time, but you will suffer a level of exhaustion as you wear yourself out, uh, trudging through the mud. I think we take our time. Yeah, I would rather I would rather take our time. I think it's yeah, it's two days of uneventful travel, but um, and so it is on the third day that you actually arrive at your destination. And I'm just sort of going to skip through that, um, reminding you all you have five days to get back with the first floor plan. And you arrive, and you see the very beginnings of the, the layout. Oh. Yeah, there we are. Um, as you can see, there's sort of a cavern that opens up near this, uh, sort of right here. Right here, you can sort of see that, like, there's some sort of gate or side entrance, which looks almost shattered open. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I don't have... Do I have tokens for y'all? Uh, I don't think so. 